If you're in slow tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy and a plank. Welcome back to Drawing a Blank, the last video of mine for 2018 and episode 27 of the series. I can't believe it's already been that many episodes, and I've been doing this for over half a year now. It feels like yesterday I was still just planning this series and drawing my first episode with Simi. I knew this project was essentially going to become a sketchbook diary of sorts, since it would chronicle what was important to me and piqued my interest on a weekly basis, as well as show my growth as an artist. And I'm honored that a lot of you are having a good time coming on that journey with me. Thank you all for the wonderful, encouraging comments this year. One of the best parts about doing this series is talking about Star Clan battles, and today is one of those days. Today's episode is about Dawn Frost, Thunder Clan warrior and Captain Morwen's original character. Like I've said in previous episodes, Star Clan battles started off as a role-playing story Morwen and I joined back in 2008, and we each made our own characters to play as. Dawn Frost is her character, and she was the main character inside Thunder Clan. Dawn Kit was born in Thunderclan to Flame Cloud and Brackenfoot, but soon after Dawn Kit was born, Flame Cloud became ill and had to stay out of the nursery to keep the other kits safe. Flame Cloud unfortunately would never recover from her illness and joined Star Clan soon after. And Dawn Kit never got to know Brackenfoot as her father since he stayed away from the nursery and Dawn Kit. But Dawn Kit wasn't alone. She grew up in the warmth and security of the Thunderclan nursery with Thorn Kit and Ren Kit a brother and sister born near the time Don Kit was born. From the beginning, Don Kit became their adopted sister, and the three Kits did everything together. Along with them in the nursery were many other Kits, but the one who became their closest friend was the slightly older Rowan Kit, son of the leader Elm Star. As the three got older, Rowan Kit became Rowan Paw and left the nursery, and Thorn Kit was showing strong signs that he held a connection to Star Clan. But Thornkit didn't want to become a medicine cat, because even as they reached the age to be apprenticed, Thornkit and another young cat, Snowkit, had a deep case of young love, and he knew that the life of a medicine cat wasn't for him. Dawnkit and Renkit knew that they couldn't let Thornkit and Snowkit be separated. So, Renkit decided to dedicate her life as a medicine cat in Thornkit's place, trying to pass off the sign Starkland was giving Thornkit as her own. The three became apprentices, Renpaw as a medicine cat, and Dawnpaw and Thornpaw as warriors. Dawnpaw was given Redleaf as her mentor, one of ThunderClan's best warriors, and Dawnpaw soon came to respect Redleaf as he taught her everything about what being a ThunderClan warrior meant. Elmstar saw great potential in Dawnpaw, and kept a close eye on Dawnpaw's training. Dawnpaw relished in the attention of her leader, and Elmstar felt more like her father than Brackenfoot ever had, always looking out for her and sharing his wisdom with her whenever she needed it most. Elmstar's kindness was ThunderClan's strength and weakness. In Elmstar's old age, he had made close friendships with the other old leaders around the lake, ShadowClan's powerful but fair Hawkstar, and WindClan's little but proud Hazelstar. It meant peace for the three clans, and encouraged cross-clan friendships, but warriors are never satisfied with peace, it seems, and many cats outside ThunderClan hissed insults about bleeding hearts leading ThunderClan. While Dawnpaw loved and respected Elmstar, she hated these taunts. After her first gathering, Dawnpaw was enamored by the power and respect all the leaders had. The next day, Dawnpaw snuck out of ThunderClan territory and went to the island by herself so she could climb the tree the leader sat on and know what it was like to look down on the clearing like they did. Something was burning in Dawnpaw's heart. She wanted the love and respect Elmstar had. Looking down on the clearing had cemented it. Dawnpaw wanted more than anything to be ThunderClan's next leader, to carry on Elmstar's legacy and even make it better. As Dawnpaw left the island to return home, however, she slipped on the tree bridge and fell into the lake. Her dreams of the future nearly drowned with her that day. But she was saved by the River Clan apprentice, Wolfpaw. And from the moment they met, Dawnpaw was forever caught between two dreams. One where she would lead ThunderClan into the bright future she wanted, and one where she ran away from the clans altogether to be with Wolfpaw. Ambition clawed at Dawnpaw as she struggled with two sides of her heart. 
One cat Don Paw found inspiration from was Ravenpaw, a Wing Clan apprentice who seemed to wear her heart on her sleeve. The Wing Clan apprentice was obviously in love with a Shadow Clan apprentice, Wildpaw. But Ravenpaw never seemed to let that stop her from being the best Wind Clan warrior she could be. Dawnpaw couldn't bear the shame and ridicule Ravenpaw got from the other warriors. Even her own clanmates seemed to see her as problematic. And it strengthened Dawnpaw's resolve to make sure no one found out about her relationship with Wolfpaw. But Dawnpaw enjoyed Ravenpaw's company and wished she could believe in the same ideals as her, living life with other clan cats as friends, despite the borders between them. After Dawnpaw saw Goldenpaw and Ravenpaw arguing at the Wind Clan border one night, Dawnpaw stepped in and together the two she-cats sent Goldenpaw back to camp. That day forward, Dawnpaw and Ravenpaw would meet at the border to talk, sharing stories about their lives and battle train for fun. As Dawnpaw became Dawn Frost and earned her warrior name, she knew she couldn't push off her dreams any longer. It was time to choose. Wolfthorn was dead set on running away together and Don Frost finally agreed to leave with him if he found a suitable territory for them to live in. So, Wolfthorn left the clans, and Don Frost waited. And waited. <sighs> and as the years went by, Don Frost mentored apprentices and saw how Elmstar continued to keep an eye on her. Her adopted siblings had already set into their roles in ThunderClan so well. Thornheart and Snowfeather had started a family of their own, and Rensong was ThunderClan's sole medicine cat. Even without her brother's connection to StarClan, Rensong was the best medicine cat ThunderClan could hope for, even if Thornheart often was delivering message from the stars to Rensong that she couldn't see. And the kit that they had grown up with, Rowanstorm, had grown too. Noble and kind like his father before him, Rowanstorm only had eyes for one cat, Don Frost. Don Frost knew how he felt and hoped beyond hope that she could feel the same way about the handsome Tom. It would make things so much easier. Don Frost felt like her life was going nowhere. There hadn't been signs of Wolfthorn for years, and Brackenfoot was Elmstar's strong deputy. Even meetings with Spotted Shadow had gotten fewer and fewer since Spotted Shadow wasn't allowed to attend gatherings. But, a few days before a gathering, Brackenfoot suddenly caught a nasty case of green cough that quickly turned to white cough before Rensong could even begin to treat it. ThunderClan's deputy was on death's door, and even though it was Don Frost's father and it filled her with guilt, Don Frost saw this as a chance. A chance that she might be closer to one of her dreams than she ever was. The day of the gathering, Brackenfoot died, and Don Frost waited on bated breath to know who Elmstar would choose as deputy. On that same day, though, Wolfthorn finally returned, telling Don Frost he had found them the perfect home. Don Frost is caught between love, loyalty, and ambition, and it's going to be difficult to sort out which one of these is the most important to her. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and we only have one more of these character pages to do, so join me back here next time when we talk about Golden Pelt. Have a fantastic new year, everyone, and please stay inspired. What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing?